Good morning, everyone. It is 11 o'clock Eastern Time on this Tuesday, August the 2nd. Right hand side of the screen, you can see the Taipei Airport, where Speaker Pelosi has just arrived. And the markets are reacting to the tension surrounding the Speaker's visit. There is concern that shipping in the Taiwan Strait, vital to trade, could be disrupted. There's lots of other concerns as well. The Speaker arrived on the capital, Taipei, just minutes ago. Beijing does not like this one bit. They've been holding live fire military exercises close to Taiwan, threatening, quote, a comprehensive confrontation. Earlier, China banned food imports from 2,000 Taiwanese food suppliers. Opinion on the visit is divided. Tom Friedman, writing in the New York Times, says why Pelosi's visit to Taiwan is utterly reckless. He says there's nothing to be gained. The Wall Street Journal says a Chinese military response to her visit will signal a dangerous new era. This is a developing story. Former White House Press Secretary Kelly McEnany joins me now. What should our response be, America's response, what should it be to China's clear military aggression and harassment? I think a forceful backing of Speaker Pelosi and an unequivocal response to China that we take threats seriously. When Karine Jean-Pierre was asked about this, she said that she would not answer a hypothetical. Well, the threats coming from China are not hypothetical. Yes, the action is hypothetical. The threat is very real. Uh, it is not an appropriate answer to say we, will, we won't answer a hypothetical. Kirby came out much stronger. He said this is an important visit from Pelosi. Uh, we stand behind her. We will protect her. I'm paraphrasing him. That needs to be the message. Even though we know the White House for many weeks has been trying to this down behind the scenes, the Pentagon telling Speaker Pelosi not to make this trip. They need to be unequivocal, forward-facing. Now, we're waiting to see what China's reaction is going to be. The plane has landed. We don't know whether it was harassed by anybody in there. We simply don't know that. But China has pledged a forceful response to the visit. Now, I keep pressing this, but what should our response to their response be? I want to leapfrog over their response and say, well, lay the law down. What are we doing here? Are we going to provide Taiwan with a lot of new weapons? What are we going to do? Yeah, so now you're asking the hypothetical. If they <laughs> take a hypothetical That's true. action, That's true. what should we do in hypothetical response? I think we've got to wait to see the action. However, I will say this. Josh Rogan, uh, who writes for The Washington Post, he does a really good job in foreign policy and analysis and diplomacy. He said China's M.O. tends to be punishing the weaker actor. So they take this very forceful rhetoric. They punish the weaker actor, who in this case, vis-a-vis -vis the United States, Taiwan is the weaker actor. And you just pointed out the bans on imports that they're already putting in place. I imagine it will be a very tough economic response. Uh, if there's a military response, I don't think it will be directly uh, at the speaker's plane, let's say, the, the harsher things that they've alleged that they would do. I think it would be something far short of that. I think China even knows the stakes when you're dealing in a nuclear world of trying to engage in military action. There's shortly going to be a conference of Asian foreign ministers, I believe, our own foreign ministers. <laughs> Secretary of State Blinken, he's going to be there, and so is China's foreign minister. Mm -hmm. I believe it's in Cambodia or Southeast Asia. That surely is an opportunity to sort of smooth the waters down and arrange for a face-to-face -face meeting, Xi Jinping, President Biden. I mean, could you see tensions sort of fall a little bit now? We, we certainly hope so, but this comes to Blinken showing strength. China met with our delegation at the beginning of Biden's term. It was in Alaska. They used the opportunity to lecture the United States about Black Lives Matter, um, about some of our domestic issues and confrontations, and Blinken just took it and essentially apologized for the United States. That is not behavior that China respects. China respects behavior like what we saw in the Trump era, the tariffs, the economic hardship that President Trump imposed. So we need to see the Biden administration take similar action, at least when it comes to rhetoric, because China respects strength. But at the end of the day, I do think China is a rational state actor. Uh, they understand the stakes, even though Xi Jinping has this huge once in a decade meeting coming up where he has to secure his third term. Uh, the mainstream media keeps saying that this has been a great win week for the Biden administration. Axios touting the president's, quote, success story. He says the only problem is with Biden's messaging. That's Axios for you. What do you say to that? Well, look, it was certainly one of the better weeks in that you've taken out the number two of al-Qaeda, even though al-Qaeda shouldn't be in Afghanistan to begin with, a self-made 
self-imposed problem. Uh, perhaps wins legislatively if cinema comes on board, but none of that negates the pain the American people are feeling. None of that changes the 19% approval rating among Hispanic voters for this president. The economic assessment, which is usually in the 20s, um, you, you have two victories here. Maybe if you get the legislative victory, but we all know the Inflation Reduction Act would actually increase inflation. Yeah. <laughs> um, so voters aren't going to feel any sort of meaningful relief um, and economically, unfortunately. Uh, Katie, would you just stay there for a second? Sure. I want to digress because five states are holding primaries today. Yeah. Lauren's been looking at it. What are the big races? Uh, Arizona, Kansas, Mississippi, Missouri, and Washington State. Let's start with the governor's race in Michigan because President Trump is backing the Republican candidate, Tudor Dixon. She's leading the pack of five Republican candidates, and whoever wins takes on Governor Gretchen Whitmer in November. In Arizona, five Republican candidates are vying for a chance to run against Democrat Senator Mark Kelly in November. He's considered very vulnerable. Trump has endorsed uh, the venture capitalist Blake Masters. Trump also announced his pick in the Missouri Republican Senate primary. In a statement, he said he was throwing his support behind Eric. But there's <laughs> two Eric. Eric's running, the attorney general, Eric Schmidt, and the former AG, Eric Greitens. Trump said, okay, I'm supporting both of them. And in Kansas, um, abortion rights are on the line. Voters will decide whether or not to change the state constitution potentially to ban abortion. I will say last year, uh, Kansas performed 7,800 abortions, and half of them were to patients who came in from other states with more strict Laws. Uh, Kaylee, some of these races are a referendum on Trump, aren't they? I don't know that they're a referendum on Trump. Um, you know, I think, look, he's endorsed a number of candidates. Uh, I think his win record somewhere in the 90 percent range or more than that. I think it's closer to 95, 97, which is a rather good record. Um, I think the Democrats are making a huge calculated mistake by trying to pick and choose primary winners. That never turns out well. Uh, see the 2016 election where they were all hoping for Trump, who ended up prevailing. I think the big story, though, um, as CNN was saying, they have this data analyst um, who noted that Republicans are actually outperforming. Uh, and he, he looked back at all of these elections, and by about six points, Republicans outperform polling. So if that's the case, and you've got Republicans plus three and the latest Fox News poll, if Republicans have a plus nine on election day, that is a tidal wave like I don't think we've seen in yeah. probably four decades. That would be huge. Okay, we won't keep you from your show. Comes up at 12 noon on the Fox News Channel. I call it Ambush. What's yes. the real name? It is called Outnumbered, but I go by Ambush now. You changed the yeah, name. I know, I changed the name. <laughs> oh, we'll see how that's approved of. Okay, thank you very much indeed.